Hi, my name is Doug Vogt from the Die Hole Foundation, and this is um, video series five, part one, on the mythologies, and it is July 12th, 2021. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to answer a lot of questions that people had that have sent me, and uh, so they get a complete picture. I hadn't covered mythologies in the past, not very much. This time I'm going to go through the, the, the contents that were in my chapter 11 in Reality Revealed, the theory of multidimensional reality. This research I did from 1971 to about 1976. Uh, anyway, so this video will answer the question of how people survived this last cataclysm, the previous one, and also the best way of surviving the next one. So uh, that's one of the main reasons for this. So we'll also answer the question of, of uh, where and, and the mythologies. Re remember one thing, and that's really important. Every one of us is the result of a man and a woman that survived this last polar reversal and cataclysm. And it looks like they were mostly all in caves when they did it. So you'll understand why we're focusing on caves and the cave door. So I'm going to cover the legends of, in an organized fashion, North, Central, and South America, then Polynesia, Australia, China, Southeast Asia, then India, Middle East, and then Europe. Um, God's Air Judgment in Chapter 8 has the, a lot of physical evidence and citations in it, about 26 pages of citations. And uh, that'll be the proof of it, besides it has some, some things, but it doesn't have the mythology. I didn't really focus on mythologies in this book. This is the last iteration of the theory of multidimensional reality. That is how I figured all of this stuff out, as I've mentioned in the previous videos. In other words, the philosophy has to come first before you can figure out where these phenomena fit in place. This is my first book, Reality Revealed, The Theory of Multidimensional Reality. And you can read the text of what I'm going to be going through in vectorpub.com chapter 11. And uh, it's basically 15 bucks. Now, I think right now I haven't changed the price yet, but if you, you order real fast, it'll be before I change the price when I get done with this video. Um, but you can read all the text of it. It doesn't have any pictures in the, in the chapter anyway. So you can get a very good idea wherever your ancestors came from, what they left, and um, uh, how you got here. Uh, video series four, part 6B, I briefly covered the psychological issues that people were having. Like for instance, if you had a feeling of something's wrong in your life or an impending danger, um, and many of us have, many times I go outside and when I was younger, I said, you know, something's wrong with this reality. Something isn't quite right. And I've gotten emails back from a lot of you who said you've had the same feeling throughout the entire life. I'm going to hopefully help you get through these stages of grief because I've read the, the comments on mine all the way back to uh, five, part 5D all the way to 6C where it became pretty obvious that the government knows the same stuff and what they're doing and then it takes all fiction out of it or possibility. If they're spending trillions of dollars to save their ass, it's pretty obvious that they believe it also. So I'm going to try to, to help you and I'm going to go through the stuff uh, briefly right now. Uh, anyway, I've watched some of the other channels, and I'm sure you know which ones I mean, that go into a disaster. They describe the cause of the disaster differently than I do. Uh, mine is different because I discover the clock cycle because of that information theory of existence. And also I give a complete explanation with citations and proof, not just in my book, God's Air Judgment and the other books, but also in the videos themselves. Um, it's taken me over three years to put all these videos together because 
it is so hard to explain something like this. First, you have to explain the philosophy, then you have to explain all the proof you have that the sun, in fact, does nova, and the, the dust shell. Uh, in fact, when I first wrote Reality Revealed, it's like 42 years ago, uh, how time flies, you know? Uh, I didn't know about the dust shell. So uh, I'll go through, when I go through the videos, I'll explain the difference. Uh, so when you read chapter 11 from God's Day you realize I was wrong about some things. I thought the sun novaed over uh, a longitude running like through Brazil, rather than what it turned out to be was by China or a longitude running through like through uh, just east of Japan. It's a big difference because I didn't know about it then. And, and during this research, this is how I learned about the, um, the shockwave from the uh, steam explosion when the sun actually does nova and hits the, all that ocean water. I didn't know that then until just a couple of months ago. Anyway, that's, that's it. Let me, let me go further. Okay, these are the five stages of grief. I know before, um, I've seen seven stages, five, and originally I thought it was three, but Kubler-Ross is the one who came up with five, and I'll accept that for right now. Denial. And we're not talking about a river that runs through Egypt now. Denying it gives you time to gradually absorb the news and begin to pro process it. That's true, especially for this stuff where you have to watch so many of my videos and comprehend what happens and see what happens. Uh, There's a common defense mechanism and helps numb you to the uh, intensity of the situation. Anger. Anger is a uh, masking effect hiding the emotions and pain that you carry. Some of this is also due to the helplessness of the situation. In this case, definitely. Uh, I'm going to comment right now. This is important. Every one of us are a soul, and there's a real good reason why some of us reincarnated now. Some of us have an important job to do. You could guess what mine is. And some of us have a more important job than others. Some may just be the grease and the gears. But there's a reason why you did incarnate now to see this event. Just remember that in the back of your head. The anger may be... Re re uh, uh, redirected at other people, you should direct, this is my comment, you should direct it towards the Calpurnius pieces of Rome and the church they created. They're the ones who changed the science to a matter-oriented theory of existence using the tool of Aristotle, which was mostly their works. As I mentioned in video series 12, there were eight authors to the works we call Aristotle. The first one was probably the original Aristotle, who I proved and showed was an admiral in Alexander the Great's navy, who's only mentioned once in half a sentence by a real Greek writer. All the rest, starting from Cicero on, were all Romans. That must be a shocker if you haven't seen this video series 12, but I want you to understand how they did it, the process of who did it, and then finally, why the Pisos did it. That will get you mad. Then take your anger out on them. They're the reason why we are only within 25 years and a few months of this event. Bargaining. During grief, you may feel vulnerable and helpless. It is not uncommon to look for ways to regain control and affect the outcome of an event. You may find yourself creating a lot of what if and if only statements. In a lot of the comments I saw on my video, as well as the others, they were saying, well, what if we, uh, how about one of those circular um, tsunami bubbles that they sell? Um, you couldn't survive in that. Uh, I didn't bother covering it very much in the previous video because to me it's beyond stupid. It may be fine for a tsunami, but this is totally different. This thing only happens every 12,068 years. There is no way, I mean, where do you even go to the bathroom? There's not enough oxygen in those little round things. Where's the supplies for maybe a year or two years? You don't have it. You should be able to figure this thing out now on top of it. 
if the thing floats and you're on a wave that's going two to 400 miles an hour, what do you think happens when that wave hits a mountain? What do you think is gonna to happen to you inside that thing or even the structure itself? That should answer your question. So, so nobody should be sending me comments of, well, maybe I should go buy or build one of these things. Don't bother with a, a, uh, a shelter in your backyard dug down a couple of feet. That's not gonna work either. Depression. Depression may feel like a quiet stage of grief. In the early stages of discovering this information, you may be uh, avoiding the emotions. You may uh, be able to embrace and work through, the, through them. In other words, you may go to working hard at something else just to forget it. In a more helpful manner, uh, you may also choose to isolate yourself from others in order to fully cope uh, with the grief in the situation. I've gotten comments from senior citizens like myself trying to tell their kids or grandkids, and they don't want to hear it at all. Now, that may be just a case of a denial. This is a case where you cannot deny it. This thing's going to happen. That's why the government spent $21 trillion plus to build cave shelters for themselves. And you're about to see an example of that. <clears throat> Acceptance. Acceptance is not necessarily a happy or uplifting stage of grief. I'm not kidding, that's true. It doesn't mean you're moving past the grief or loss. You don't have to. It does, however, mean that you've accepted it and have come to the understanding that it, what it means in your life now. You will look at the world and existence totally differently. You have had a major change in your life and that change, changes the way you feel and look about many important things in your life. Many people have told me after they read my book, uh, even Reality Revealed and God's Day of Judgment, they look at reality totally differently. They look at life totally differently. <clears throat> anyway, what I want to try to do is, if you can get through most of these stages to get to this stage and getting off your ass and actually doing something. Now what I mean by that is, you can't ignore this event. That's why it is getting warmer. Government has given us this stupid excuse, for global warming is due to you, your car, your hibachi, um, and you breathing. CO2, because they knew as we get closer to this reversal, the sun's output is going to increase and it's going to get warmer. So they gave you, they handed you an excuse that you could be able to accept. But that's not the truth. If you've seen my videos, especially the last couple, you know what the story really is. <clears throat> I have a friend who's an engineer. He's part of the team and he sells a product that they use in survival caves and other things. It's an important component. And uh, he was working with a company back in 2012 and 13. Uh, he got quotes from a number of engineering firms and he was working with a, a particular engineering firm. I'm not gonna identify them and I'm not gonna identify my friend. But uh, they manufactured rugged and transportable modal, mobile shelters. They manufacture a level one facility, which are actually fully equipped survival shelters. They measure eight feet by six feet by 22 feet long. Kind of narrow, you know what I mean? But they would fit on, two of them would fit on a flatbed to deliver to the site. These shelters are literally all over North America. They are located in mines to actual bomb shelters in residential and commercial buildings. Most of them are within 50 miles of a state capital and they are totally innocuous in nature. You know, it's where they put them in the shelters. So, so you, the general public, even though you paid for it, don't know where they are. Okay, the engineering firms were told they weren't told the truth. Remember I told you in the very beginning of my, of my series, series one and series four, that this is the greatest secret the country had. Thanks to me, it's no longer a great secret. So this is what, summary of what the engineers were told 
for the purpose of these cave shelters. In 1859, Carrington event uh, became the main focus of discussion for the engineers. Government officials were briefed that society would collapse if the sun emitted a coronal mass ejection, a CME, similar to the one that destroyed telegraph lines and transformers in 1859. They didn't exactly destroy the lines. They burned in some places. I don't even know if they had transformers in those days. But uh, life went on and they just went after it. After the thing was over with, they just replaced whatever they had to and life was normal. Our sun was a natural, this is what they told them. Our sun has a natural cycle. But a CME is not a natural cycle. That's a random thing that happens. So right off the bat, that's a lie. I mean, this is true, but it's a lie for this. Where these events are imminent. Well, CMEs are not imminent. They're random. You don't know what side, if you're unlucky enough that the sun gives off one of these things towards you, yes. But you know, in three, four days, you wind up getting hit. But it's not on a cycle. And it, to us, it's not imminent. But that clock cycle and polar reversal, that is eminent. Permanent damage to our power grid and infrastructure would be unthinkable in today's modern world. If a CME was localized and minimized, minimum intensity, the United States might recover quite quickly. However, if the event was strong enough to affect all of North America, it would result in the end of the world as we know it. Right off the bat, you know that's not true. In 1859, yeah, it had happened, but life went on, and they kept farming and stuff like that. Uh, you can ground the tractors and a lot of things if you know a couple of days before it and pull the electronics out of it and put it in a Faraday cage, and you can go on with life as usual. So they exaggerate a lot of this stuff deliberately. This is the key part. Continuity, continuity of government operations were immediately put into motion. This may be one of the reasons why they went after Trump. Actually, you'll know exactly why. You'll see one more proof, like I showed in one of the earlier videos. I think it was part, part uh, five in series four. <clears throat> anyway, uh, if this was remotely true, then wouldn't they have spent the trillions of dollars on hardening the transformers, the, the uh, substations, the power generating stations? No, they didn't. Until Trump came around, then they appropriated money to harden those things. So here they say it's going to ruin the electric grid and stuff like that, but they spend no money on hardening it from a, a CME, which tells you right off the bat they're lying. They're really building these things for something, a totally different event, which has a natural clock cycle and is imminent. Now, this stuff was, well, let me go in further, you'll see. Uh, February 1st, 2013, he was told by people in the project, this is from the engineering company, if you wake up some morning and all the politicians in DC have vanished, it's time to kiss your ass goodbye. You can interpret that any way you wish. At the time, my friend had no idea what they were talking about, but thanks to my work, my videos, he now, know, he now understands. That's why he's working with us. Code words are used to alert the politicians by an email transmission to occupy the shelters ASAP. And the code words, taking up a new hobby. If you want to have some fun with the politicians, both obviously in your state, as well as federal government especially, why don't you just send them a nice one-line note um, and see what they do? That'll be interesting. <clears throat> one of the engineers he made friends with uh, once told him, quote, I'd love to drop by by but my wife has, some, has me taking up a new hobby this weekend, meaning he had to go to work on the K project. 
you can have some fun with this. And believe me, this is one case you should have fun with this. Use the expression and torture them. Let them know the American people are beginning to know. Now, this is where I'm going to get into Trump. This is where he had his contract with them in these years. And this is spending for that company. This is the one he was working with. And this is millions of dollars. And so my book, God's Day of Judgment, is when I came up with the, I had the date of when this thing was going to happen. And I think I figured out what side of the earth is going to be facing when it happened. So all of a sudden, the spending starts going up. The demand, this is all government contract. Federal, federal contract awards, federal contract sub awards is a little green area. But they had direct contracts from the government for these shelters. Now, he was working here and here, so it was a lot. Then went down, went up to Fifth King, went down a little bit here. They must have gotten done with most of it. Remember the work that they, the Congress appropriated six or seven hundred million dollars for the visitor center underneath the Capitol? It was about in 2010 or 11. So they were spending on a lot of these, these shelters, pre-done shelters. So the presidential election was 2016. Now, the budget for 2017 is passed in 2016. Trump takes over, uh, over in 2017, but he's responsible for the budget in this, for 17, that controls 18. And look what happened. The price for the shelters went down to nothing. Like I said in the earlier videos, part five, five H or I, when I was talking about Trump and the executive orders, uh, they did not tell Trump about this, these, these shelters. He undid the um, executive order from Obama, who in turn was adding stuff to other executive orders, and they never told him. And that's why they turned, the bureaucracy turned against them, because it, it, it prevented them from finishing off these shelters to save their ass. This is, you know, back to the five points of, of grief. The part about anger, this is where you could be angry, okay? And you know how to take it out of. Okay, now we'll get to the mythologies. Now, I, I went through my chapter 11 in Reality Revealed, and I categorized the different things so you could see which legends talk about which events that happen. The ones that are in red here are ones that I, I set, felt knew more than the others. They had more of the components of what happens. Now, these are the ones who mention caves. Now, this is North America. And here's the ones who mentioned the sun noving or what it looked like before and after. Some of their legends, not just in the Americas, but also in South America and in, in uh, India and others, they have, one of their legends are basically, you'll have a male and a female, or two characters, and they fight with each other. And those are actually represented the old sun and then the new sun. And the new sun, like here, is a new sun, is a red sun. And two suns here, they mentioned, yellow after, yellow sun, and then after a red sun, which is a cooler sun. But gives you an idea. These represented where they mentioned where the sun either the sun stopped in the sky, which means the rota rotation of the Earth stopped. And some actually blatantly say that it rotates in the other direction. I'm going to quote a few of them after this. The flood deluge. Gee, a lot of them mentioned the flood. And one of them from Lake Tahoe mentions a large wave. Now, that would have been from the Atlantic, which is really impressive. Rain, falling rocks, which is really the dust shell when it hits the Earth. That's the thing I didn't know. 42 years ago, years ago. I, didn't had, I hadn't had that figured out yet. But they all mention, or many of them mention rocks and you know, the tactites and the glass beads and stuff like that landing on the earth. Because uh, if you took a longitude running through Brazil, that's the side that was high noon when the dust shell hit. So they would have seen it. 
lightning, a few mentioned the wind, most of them mentioned cold, all of them mentioned darkness. Shockwave in California, Lake Tahoe, I can understand why. Volcanoes, earthquakes, and previous civilizations. Now, uh, again, this is where you can go, vectorpub.com, chapter 11, HTM, and you can download uh, and, or read it online like that. And um, you'll see all the, the whole chapter is there. So uh, whoever you were related to or where your ancestors came from, you'll see what they went through. So North America, Uti Indians of California and Utah. Here's California and here's Utah. So someplace, I guess they range within this area. <clears throat> uh, the sun was shivered, shivered into a thousand fragments which fell to the earth, causing a general conflagration. That's probably when the dust shell hit in a longitude like running through here, they certainly would have gotten it. Indians of Lake Tahoe area, Great Spirit sent an immense wave across the continent. Means the Atlantic, they're saying the Atlantic went right across and hit them where, this is Lake Tahoe right here, but they probably, their span of areas here, maybe down here, you don't know, but their ancestors who are now here say that. From the sea and this wave engulfed both the oppressors and the oppressed, all but a very small remnant survived. The flames went up to the very heaven and melted many stars so that they rained down in molten metal upon the earth. Again, the dust shell when it finally hit us 17 or 18 hours later. Obajawe Indians of Great Lakes. Great Lakes are up here for those who are not Americans. Uh, he fixed it just where the sun would, would strike the land as it rose above the earth's disk. Remember, it went sunrise in the west and set in the east because it rotated clockwise. If you look at the, at the globe there, it went clockwise. Oh, I must have hit a button. Let me go back. So, so they saw that was sunrise there, and it was barely sunrise when the thing happens. Anyway, well, this is a legend where supposedly one Indian went out and he would lasso the sun and it stopped. And sure enough, he caught the sun and held it fast so that it did not rise, which means the Earth's rotation stopped because that's the cause of the flood. You'll see in all of these legends, they all talk about the flood. You cannot have a flood unless the Earth's rotation stopped, especially the kind of floods that these people are describing and what the model that I have presented creates and proves. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm going to give up on that one. Indians from the Pacific Northwest. A general conflagration swept across the earth, consuming every living thing except for a few people who took refuge in a cave. Well, that's right. I should probably say, I go through some mythologies here, and then the ones that talk about a cave, I include on, on the second part. Uh, Toluxia Indians, British Columbia. One man and one woman hid themselves in a deep cave in the heart of a mountain, and for those two have the world been since repopulated. Navajo tribe, Southwest. Their only food was meat, which they had in abundance for all kinds of game were closed up with them in their cave. But their light was dim, that means after they came out, and only endured for a few hours each day. Oh, let me explain. You see this reference here, number five. If you go to the back of the chapter 11, you'll see the reference and the page number where to go in case you want to go to the library and go read it to see if I'm correct. Then the man and the animals began to come up from their cave, and their coming up required several days. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's Carlsbad Caverns. Lastly came the white people who started off at once for the rising sun and were lost sight of for many years. Well, rising sun then was the east, so they went east someplace. Central America, 
again, ever a flood deluge, large wave, uh, the sun noving. Uh, here they say seven suns. Caves, seven caves, nine caves, stuff like that. Uh, cold, darkness, the shock wave, more of them, because they were by the coast, and this shock wave would have been like right over around Australia, north of New Zealand, and as, as long as whenever that sun noven, the heat, two or 3,000 degrees hitting on water, immediately creates a steam explosion, and that's the shock wave. Many of them talk about a previous civilization. So three previous civilizations, three of them here, four previous civilizations. <clears throat> Mayans. The earth had been destroyed three previous times. An inundation which swept across the world swallowed all things in its mountainous surges. That was the case of the Gulf of Mexico and then later the Atlantic coming over Mexico and Central America. And there's the reference for it. The inundation of the trees for all the forests were swept away. At the close of the ages, it has been decreed, shall perish and vanish each weak god of man, and the world shall be purged with a ra ravaging fire. I've seen this expression in three other places. It basically comes to all a man's false gods pass away. You now know two of them which are going to go pass away. Pago and the Pimas tribe of South, Southern California. <clears throat> then in the twinkle of an eye, there came a peal of thunder and an awful crash. That's the shock wave. They had no problem hearing it. And a green mound of water reared itself over the plain. It seemed to stand upright for a second, then cut increasing by the lightning gorded by uh, on like a great beast. So Pacific Ocean, I mean, the Gulf of Mexico was rushing this way, and they saw it. This is actually pretty deep, the Gulf. It's about uh, one and a half or two miles deep. From a box produced uh, deafening explosions, again, the shock wave. He dumped out red-hot stones, fire and lava whirled down. Uh, Yes, the volcanoes were going off, but I think this is really referring to uh, when the dust shell hit the place. A lot of the legends, you don't know what time period each one of the events did happen. But he, the sun, moved not. You know, again, they're reporting the sun stood still, which means the Earth's rotation stopped. That's what causes the flood. There he lay on the horizon, and it would be the western horizon. That's where the sun rose before it. It stopped. It was just actually for them just before sunrise. Now there had been no sun in existence for many years. We don't know how many years we don't see much of a sun. There will be a lot of clouds, maybe a little bit. It's like living in Seattle in December at about 4.30 or 5 at night. That's probably what it looks like. Central America legends. Quichi Indians, they, the common people, tried to climb the trees, and the trees shook them off their branches. Translation, horrible earthquake. They tried to hide in the caves and the dens of the earth, but those closed their holes against them. Uh, probably the, the powerful and elites uh, closed the door on the caves, and the little people were stuck outside to die. The legend continues and states that survivors from this civilization took refuge in seven caves. After the destruction had passed, <clears throat> the survivors emerged from their caves to find that the sun was not visible. Dark, exactly as I say. Toltec, Southern Mexico. Many men and women escape principally in caves. Aztecs, take your hearth fire and hide yourself in a cave in the nearby mountain. Then the earth shook and the mountains rocked and gigantic convulsions. While well, seven brothers of them, the giants, found safety by closing themselves into certain caves in a mountain called Tolok, South America. 
Now you're seeing caves again. Nova, or the sun. Flood, all of them. Rain, falling rocks, cold darkness. Uh, Tupless tribe of Brazil. Mana, the maker, without beginning or end, author of all this. They had a concept of God. Sent upon them Tata, the divine fire, the sun, which burned all that was on the surface of the earth. That's pretty descriptive. He swept uh, about the fire in such a way that in places it raised mountains and in others dug valleys. That's to tell you, you had horrible earthquakes and those continental plates bang up against each other. Some places are going to rise and some are going to fall. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Good luck. Indians of Paraguay. Uh, the destruction of the world was due to the sun. This orb once fell from the sky. A second time it fell and burnt up the earth. Yucca Care Indians of Bolivia. The sun caused a great con uh, conflagration which swept over the earth, consuming every living thing except a few who took refuge in a deep cave. South American legends about caves, same tribe. Only a very few succeeded in escaping, some by climbing trees, the other by, uh, others in caves. When the water subsided, the remnant came together and by gradual increase populated the world. Peruvian Indus, Indus, Indias. There are four mythological uh, 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 civil, uh, civilizers of Peru. They emerged from a cave, that's the name of the cave, lodging of the dawn. Dawn because dawn was on the Western Hemisphere before. Incas of Peru, a time when the waters covered the earth and, ma and man fled into caves in order to escape the ensuing deluge. German expedition in Peru in 1971. I found this in Erich von Daniken's book, and I, I checked out the, the German magazine he mentions. They found a cave system by modern construction standards. At six doors, these tunnels led straight towards the coast, of, uh, the Pacific coast, uh, with a slope of 14, de uh, 14 degrees, uh, but the floor they had made with, with slits or pits to prevent sliding, and it went for 50 to 65 miles long, transport, transport tunnels. <laughs> we're building tunnels too. <laughs> what they did 12,000 years ago, we're doing it again the same thing. I wonder how it worked out for them. Some people survived it though there. Polynesia. Now, this kind of threw me also. I'll tell you why. I don't see how any of them really survived even the flood. But a few mentioned caves, and I don't think were there when they had it. The nova, or the sun doing it, the rotation stopping, uh, flood deluge, no question about it, and a large wave, rain, falling rocks, cold, darkness. A couple of mentioned previous civilizations. Um, I'll explain one thing. They're all islands in the Pacific. And the minute the Earth stopped its rotation, they had the flood on them. It takes eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach the Earth. If the, if the wave didn't kill them, what I think happened, those, I, I think the Earth started giving indications of this, like all of a sudden the wave's getting higher and higher because the Earth is slowing down gradually. And some people must have gone up, and if they had a cave, they went into it. Those are the few that probably told, survived to tell you about the sun noving. The minute the sun noved, was it noved over them, they would have been dead within seconds. I mean, it's like when the atomic bomb over Hiroshima and people were shadows on the side of a concrete wall. That how, that's how fast you would have been gone. So you don't get much from them except the flood part. And I don't even... I'm not even sure these people were even on these locations. New Zealand and Australia, probably, yeah. But the others, those little islands, I don't think anybody survived it. Hawaiian Islands, and they didn't start there either. They were someplace else. They immigrated finally to Hawaiian Islands. 
He, Maui, then snares the sun. Again, sun stops. <clears throat> it stops in the sky, low on the horizon. It would have been. I'll show you. This is where I think the longitude where the sun knows it, right about here. Now, if you look, Hawaii is there. It would have been low on the horizon, exactly as the legend says. Same thing is true for the Babylonian ones I'll show you in a second. Uh, Pele, the, the fire goddess, the sun, once lived far to the southwest. I even tell you it was in the west. The sun rose in the west, which tells you the earth stopped its rotation and went the other way. Now if you look at the North, at the north Pole, it's, we're running counterclockwise. Samoa Islands. In days of old, the heavens fell down and people had to crawl about uh, like the lower animals. I'll explain why. There's two reasons why. One, when this sun novid, there's a tremendous amount of evaporation and steam. And it, the clouds and the steam had been so low to the ground, they had to crawl on the ground. The other one would be, there's a lot of volcanoes going off, but when the dust shell hit also, that dust is added to this. This, this mess in the atmosphere, that they probably had to crawl on the ground to avoid you know, breathing in the dust as well as this hot steam. It's a real procophony of, of death and disaster. Sorry to say, but. Southeast Asia, Indonesia, North Borneo, Philippines, China, Mongol, Japan, and Siberia. Uh, Northern Borneo. The sky was originally very low to the, to the earth, but it uh, retreated uh, when six of the seven original suns were killed. Gives you an idea of exactly what I just said. They knew the cause, the sun. The steam must have been just hor horrendous. The cosmic mechanism winds itself up, and in a general conflagration of nature, the sea is carried out of its bed Mountains spring out of the ground, rivers change their course, human beings and everything are ruined, and the ancient traces affected. By the way, um, if you do read my chapter 11, the stuff from China is very good. Uh, the, their concept of Taoism, if you replace the word Taoism with information, it would fit perfectly. So there was an advanced civilization in China, and there was one also in India, and I think there may have been one in the Central America, but I, you know, from what I look, I think so. <clears throat> now, this is China. This is more of Chinese uh, legends. And, and traveling from the, this is from the Chinese encyclopedia of some emperor, 15 or 1600. In traveling from the shores of the Eastern Sea towards Che Yu, that is here, near Mongolia, in this area, there are found in the sand very far away from the sea ocean shells, oyster shells, and the shells of crabs. The tradition of the Mongols who inhabit the country is that it has been said from time to time immemorial that in a remote antiquity, the the waters of the deluge flood flooded the district. So the Pacific Ocean is what they're talking about. When this away, went all the way. And you can see why. From the tiny Chinese deluge legend, we hear of the mythical empress Nu Ka, royal lady of the west, the sun. So they knew this. They're reporting that the sun rose in the west and set in the east. At that time, the miracle is said to have happened that the sun during a span of 10 days did not set. It wasn't 10 days, they're messing it up. It may be that long before the oceans and the waters drain from the land. You'll see the number seven show up a lot also in these legends. The sun did not set for 10 full days and the entire land was flooded. An immense wave that reached the sky fell down on the land of China. The water was well up on the high mountains and the foothills could not be seen at all. 
The only way that happens is the Earth stops its rotation, and in that case, the Pacific Ocean went west and covered the place, destroyed just about everything. Hoar frost falls in summer, that's the Ice Age. The atmosphere is thick and humid beings are choked. That's the dust and part of the steam too. The state perishes. <laughs> you know, like, who's gonna listen to government when this happens, you know? What do you think is gonna happen the next time? Unless government gets their act together and actually does what they should morally do. It is thought that when dragons fight, fireballs fall to the ground and a strong wind prevails in the heavens. I explained why in the earlier uh, videos. When dragon eggs hatch, lightning flashes, thunder bellows, and darkness comes to the, er, to the earth. Uh, that's the tactites and, and glass beads that fell in China, Australia, and all over that part of the world when this thing happened. <clears throat> Chinese legends of caves. The Chinese legend, Reign of the Chaos, records records had not yet been established or ins inscriptions, writing, invented. At first, even the rulers dwelt in caves and desert places, eating raw flesh and drinking blood. They also built pyramids, too. Asia, India, Babylon, Iran, Hebrews, well, we'll do India. Also very rich in, in information about this cataclysm. A full thousand of such cycles constitute a day of Brahma. At the end of each day of Brahma comes universal destruction. There are three destruct, uh, destructions. The destruction by water, the destruction by fire, the destruction by wind. I'll correct them. All three happen at the same time. Depends on what side of the earth you're on and how fast the sun comes around to cook you. Remember, the sun, what we learned, what we all learned from my last and two previous videos, is giving off this heat for it looks like at least 100 days. So the earth is rotating, so everybody gets a chance to enjoy it. Um, the Hindu book, Vedata Sutra, also tells us all contradictions to truth pass away. And those, the same thing, all of man's force gods pass away. In the Brahmin literature in Rick verses, the Rick verses, there are 12,000 verses. Each one represents a year. So they kind of knew us around 12,000 years. And many of them mentioned it also. Uh, India and Babylon and the Chinese also in front of kind of a funny way. My, my impression is, is they didn't figure out the exact number of years. And I figured, I, I realized that by reading all these legends, even the rich and powerful didn't know exactly when this thing was gonna happen. Uh, by some fluke of, of um, chance, um, we were given that number um, by sheer luck. Twelve astronomers uh, decided to map uh, the distance of a bunch of stars, and I, I was able to find the six blank periods of space, and four of the six were 12,068 light years apart. And God, courtesy of Moses writing it down, put the number 12,068 embedded in the Torah, as I showed clearly. If you haven't seen... I think it's video series six on Moses' 10 code systems. Part two goes into that, and part seven is God's code system, using the same number. I f oh, let me see. Uh, okay. Here's India, and look at the depth of the oceans on both sides, but they aren't that big, but that does a lot of damage. In the Hindu book, uh, Prasna Upani, I can't pronounce it, forget it, it is told that in the past, the sun rose in the west and set in the east. Gee, what have I been saying? Now, Adulita, the sun, when he rises, goes towards the east. That means he rises in the west and sets in the east, and thus receives the eastern spirit into his rays. Hindu book Avatar 
Now you know where they got the name for the movie. By the power of God, there issues from the essence of Brahma, a being shaped like a boar. By the way, this is about the best description of what that sun looked like when it nova, it, which proves that the sun did nova on that side of the earth and India had a chance to enjoy it. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, being the shape of a boar, white and exceedingly small, the sun. This being in the, the space of an hour drew to the size of an elephant of the largest size. That's the sun when it novas. That, that gets your attention real fast. And, and remain, remained in the air. Uh, when that, Vera, the sun, suddenly uttered a sound like the loudest, loudest thunder, and the echo reverberated and shook all quarters of the universe. That is the shock wave from the Pacific. And, but, but keep in mind also, <coughs> it novas over here, and Earth stops its rotation. And then guess what? Reverse direction. So this sun is going to evaporate water for the Indian Ocean. It goes on like this. We just don't know how much of a spike it is, but for the first 24 hours, you're probably already here. It's basically cooking, cooking away, evaporating a lot of ocean water. The worst part is where it actually does Nova for however many hours it sits still. I think it's seven to eight hours is what my, my educated guess is. Um, they go on further. What the sun looked like when it nova. Um, again, from the Indian uh, Hindu books, that Vera, the sun figure, again, made a loud noise and became a dreadful spectacle, shaking the full flowing mane, which hung down its neck on both sides erecting the hu humid airs of his body. He pr uh, proudly displays his two most exceedingly white tusks, uh, then rolled about his wine-colored red eyes. Well, these are stars that have known in the past. This is the dust shell. I have a feeling at, at the time of a no, this dust shell is really white hot, so it's white. Now, you can see, I've looked at hundreds of, uh, these are called planetary nebulas. They're really stars that nova. You can see, they're all different. Every seem to star I've looked at is slightly different or a lot different. But you can see what they saw was something like this, up and down and the white dust shell coming towards them. And I think that's what they're describing here. Middle East, Babylon, the second tablet of the Babylonian deluge legend. Uh, the, the there came up from the horizon a black cloud. I think I mentioned in the previous video. There here, Sun Nova's here. So it would have been dusk to them. It just set, and then the thing happened. So they were seeing it on the horizon, but then you had the, the evaporation uh, of the ocean water and that dark cloud I showed you in the previous video, and they would have seen that coming this way. Also, as the sun moves this way, it's going to evaporate water and creating these clouds, and it came towards them. And that's, what, that's what they're describing. <coughs> Uh, on a horizon, a black cloud, Adid thundered, that's the shock wave, within it. All light was turned into darkness. It flooded the land because Indian Ocean probably came up this way and flooded them. <coughs> um, it turned the darkness, it flooded. Okay, rugged, rugged high, the waters uh, climbed over the mountains six days and nights blew the wind, the deluge and the tempest overwhelmed the land. When the seventh day drew near, the tempest ceased, the deluge. After 12 days, the land emerged. Now that's probably what the Chinese were saying, 10 days, it's really, they're saying 12 days. Seven, I see a lot, a lot, six to seven days, so 
The ocean water, I figure the worst of it is going to be gone within the first two or three days if you're in higher elevations. Um, but by six or seven days, so basically you have to be your watertight um, uh, cave system, let's say you're at 500 feet, for at least six days, that's not too bad, until the water settles and then you can open up a little bit <laughs> to, to, to get some air if you need more air. <clears throat> <clears throat> Much propagation of the authority of the apostate and other villains as regarding the destruction of the reign of religion. Again, saying that all false religions pass away. The wicked of every kind of goodness and virtue and the disappearance of honor and wisdom from the countries. Uh, we're seeing that now. <laughs> That's the problem. Six days and six nights went past and the tempest raged over the waters, which gradually covered the land. But when the seventh day came, the wind fell and the swirling waters grew peaceful and sea retreated. Babylon, Zoroastra. One of the holy books of Mazdaism states that the enclosure, K, formed by Yim, one of their gods, was made by him. The people and the cattle and other creatures shall come out from that enclosure, cave, and arrange the world again. Hebrew legends. The Torah is the only book that has in it the total number of years between polar reversals and cataclysm, which is 12,068 years. During this period of 120 years, it is said that the sun rose in the west and set in the east. Well, you can add a couple of zeros to that and you got your 12,000 years again. That's where, where they, they screwed up. Egyptian legend. Now, this is actually told within Plato. There have been and will be again many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes. The greatest have been brought about by agencies of fire and water, and now you know what that is, and other lesser ones by innumerable other causes. In the first place, you remember a single deluge only. Now, he's talking to Solon, the Greek, and the Egyptian priest is talking to Solon. But there were many previous ones. In the next place, you do not know that there were formerly dwelt in your land the fairest and noblest race of men which ever lived, and that you and your whole city are descended from a small seed of remnant of them which survived. An Egyptian theory recorded by Herodias said that during 11,340 years the Egyptian, of Egyptian history, the sun of four occasions altered its course, twice rising, uh, he now sets Anyways, it's, he's talking about east and west. And twice where he now rises. Is he telling you, it's like they're wrong about the number of years, but this is the best they can remember. Remember, there's a lot of time between when it happened and uh, he's writing this at 587 uh, BCE. So 8,500, 9,000 years later. A lot changes in, in these legends. Um, but anyway, you can see they, they know something, that the, the sun changes direction. It's really the earth stops its rotation and goes in the other direction. <clears throat> Europe, this is the last of it, by the way. In the Nordics and the Britons mentioned caves. They mentioned the Nova, the earth burnt, the Tartars. All of them, the flood, large wave, rain, rocks, wind. Southern cold, uh, sudden cold. In fact, the ocean freezing. <laughs> the Nordics say that it froze. The darkness and the shock wave, earthquakes and previous civilizations. The Volgas of Russia. I'll show you where they are. They are there. Volga is right here, above the Caspian Sea as long as the Tartars are there also the same thing. The earth was, bur uh, was burning at both corners of the sky. Now let me explain that. <laughs> They're here. Exactly on the other side of the earth is the Americas. This is where the dust shell hit. 
So this dust shell goes around the Earth. So they see this dust shell going past the Earth this way. And they look up in the sky, and it's burning from both horizons, east and west horizon. Tartar, same thing. At this time, the whole world was turned red. Fire and flame surrounded the earth and rose to the heavens. Same thing. They're here. On the other side is the Americas. They go, run around north, south, east, and west around the earth and went past them. They described it pretty good. But again, it proves my, the model that I've created from this theory. Greek legends, the noise of a bull bellowing. Oh, by the way, this is also uh, the, the shock wave. Uh, the noise of a, a bull bellowing aloud in proud, uh, ungovernable fury, that must be the shock wave. And at, at another, the sound of a lion uh, relentless of heart. I think as, as the sun is going across here with that tremendous heat, it's causing these steam explosions and constant um, shock waves going on. Plato's Statesman, that's Plato's book, it's called The Statesman. There was a time when God directed the revolutions of the world, <coughs> uh, but at the completion of a, cr a certain cycle, he let go, and the world uh, by a necessity of its nature, turned back. In other words, it stopped its rotation and went the other way. And went around the other way. In the case of the world, the perturbation is very slight and amounts only to a reversal of motion. This new action is spontaneous and is due to the exquisite perfection of balance to the vast size of the universe and to the smallness of the pivot upon which it turns. Remember a model that I have in the Hebrew alphabet, uh, two crosses the x-axis is what we're talking about. That x-axis is when the Earth stops its rotation and have this big spike of energy. <coughs> All changes in this heaven affect the animal world, and this being the greatest of, of them uh, is most destructive to man and animals. At the beginning of the cycle before our, own, our very own, very few of them had survived, and on these a mighty change passed. Okay, why the Earth stops its rotation and reverses itself, I put it in video series four, part 4F. It's also in part three, a series four, series four, part 4G. So part three and 4G and 4F. It uh, looks like I probably have to do another one. I'm gonna, this time I'm going to base it on what goes on the center of an atom is the same thing as going on in the center of a star and a planet. Nordic legends. After this happened, the benevolent gods were warned by Himdal, who blew his horn, that must be the shockwave, which was heard around the world that the battle was about to begin, the battle being this cataclysm. Seas mountain high swelled on the land, pouring forth, bloody forth like hail, red dust. That's the dust shell. They would actually would have seen it too and had it. Gaelic legends, the Irish. Just before the battle began, an omen appeared in the sky. A wonderful thing has come to pass today, for the sun, it seems to me, has risen in the west. Okay, the one thing I've shown you here, all these legends, all over the world, you cannot have a flood that they've all described. It's our ancestors have described and lived through unless the earth stopped its rotation and then went in the other direction. It's the only way you can have a flood like this that's described all over the world. Nobody even argues it anymore. Certainly the CIA is not. There's another way of proving the big wave. Now, I'm a member of the Geological Society of America, and they have subgroups in it, and one is on coal and energy, and the other one is on sedimentology, and I'm a member of both for many years. I'm approaching 25 years as a member. Now, this is coal. 
Actually, the coal seam goes all the way up here. This white stuff is snow. This is, they filmed this during the winter time. This is all snow here. All this coal was deposited in one shot. And then there's dirt above that, which you'll see in a better picture. Now, I'm going to tell you the formula for not just peat moss, that's a, even a higher, for wood and stuff like that, it turns to charcoal, and there's a formula for the whole thing. But it comes out to about 10 to 1. So if you have 90 feet of coal, you've got 900 feet of organic material. Now, imagine 900 feet of wood and forest material. It first gets burned. It's burning because the sun just novaed over the thing. And then a few hours later, the ocean reaches it. And pull. when you have an ocean that's rushing at two to 400 miles an hour, it's going to snap a big tree, small trees, uh, like it's a twig, like nothing. Just rip it off. And since wood floats, it's going to come to the top of this wave or inside of it. And as the wave slows down and it hits a mountain range, it's going to deposit some of that. That's what happened here. This is Wyoming, by the way. Oh, no, sorry. This is the Colorado seam, which is the foothills of the Rockies. Here's another one. This is the uh, Power River Basin in Wyoming. We, we produce the most amount of coal there in that state. And it's from here all the way up to there. This is, in some places, it's 200 feet thick. So that would be a forest or trees and organic material that's 2,000 feet thick. You understand? And it's deposited in one shot. Now you understand. Now this is probably deposited when the Cretaceous and Jurassic period, or maybe even before uh, Jurassic, where the Earth was closer to the sun, it was warmer, it was more humid, more rain because it was more ocean, more water, and there was a lot of plant life. There's a reason why those dinosaurs were so big. They had a lot to eat. <clears throat> here's a good example of, here's your coal. Here's the overburden that these, these steam shovels here, they're like 50, 70 feet high. Gives you an idea what they're digging out. And this is the coal mine. There's more to it. This was deposited in one shot. The reason why you don't see too many layers, sedimentary layers above, is because after this happened and, and it burned, there was no more forest there. That's why the plain states are more or less doesn't have much of a forest. It's just plains, grasslands. Here's an example. This is coal. It was once a tree, tree logs. You can see the, rim, the rings of the trees, uh, but it's all the oxygen and moisture has been out of it. It was in here. Here you can see the sedimentary layers real carefully. This up here, probably there was a forest and, and a later reversal and, and then buried and then nothing. And then some trees developed and then they burned. And then they were covered by another layer, layer upon layer of dirt and sand and gravel and stuff like that. But here, this is your evidence. The only way that could happen this can happen is if a huge wave brought all that organic material burning and then the wave caps it with clay, gravel, sand, you name it, seals it up and this stays in there and keeps cooking until all the oxygen and other things and water is out of it and you got three or four different types of coal. <coughs> To prove my point further, this is the coal deposit in the United States. Western side of Appalachia, eastern side of the Rockies. The forest from here, and there must have been huge forests in through here during Jurassic and Cretaceous period. Atlantic Ocean comes across here, snaps the trees, gets to the mountains, and drops it but the water keeps filtering through the Rockies and goes to the, to the uh, west coast, completes the west coast. When to the Pacific, same thing. Whatever forests and trees were here, 
snapped like twigs. I, I should say really by toothpicks. And brought here and deposited here and the western slopes of the, of the, um, uh, the Appalachian mountain range all the way down to, that's uh, Alabama. That's what it is. It's, it's, you're, staring, you're staring at the truth right here. That's, that's the wave. That's the proof of the wave. We're almost done. Reality check. Man does not cause global warming. Somebody, a, a, a lady sent me this, and I thought it did a wonderful job. What has the most influence on our climate? You think us and this little speck here called Earth? No, it's that. If you can't figure this thing out, you're too stupid to be saved. I mean, but this is what government's trying to make you believe because they don't want you to know the truth, but now you know the truth because of me. It's not the ants on this speck of dust. Well put. <clears throat> you want to know why DARPA did the cave contest three months or four months after I got done with the nuts and bolts of Series 4 explaining the whole Ice Age and Polar Reversal? It's because they realized they built those cave systems they spent 21 plus trillion dollars on. And this is what, this could be the, the uh, Appalachians. And down here, some places, Washington and, and Delaware and, and Pennsylvania and North and South Carolina, with thousands of feet of ice and snow over the cave entrances, which they can't get to. They didn't know the mechanism that causes this thing, that happens. Because when you brainwash 45 years worth of scientists, two and a half generations of scientists, you know, Computer expression, garbage in, garbage out. You put garbage into their heads, even though they're smart people, garbage comes out. They got the wrong advice, and this is the result. The contest, which is now two and a half million dollars, you can come up with a program that will identify uh, living people and dead people and maneuver away through a cave system. You're going to get two and a half million dollars. By the way, the, third, the last of the contest is this August. This is why. They realized they can't get a human being to the door where the cave system, these, these survival caves are that they've promised innumerable numbers of politicians and, and elites safety. The world's most expensive tombs. Done with. I vented my spleen long enough. Chapter 8 in this will give you a whole explanation of of the mechanism and got references of it like that. If you, if you want to, don't stay in the five stages of, of grief. You can stay mad. You deserve that. We all deserve that. You have to be more constructive. If you're a parent, you make sure your kid, your little darling, uh, doesn't become a social psych major, doesn't want to become a lawyer, because these people you don't need. You need people who make things and do things. Chemists, mathematicians, physicists, uh, metallurgists, guys who make pipe, drillers, people who go mining, drill mining, practical things, things you make. How to make paper, toilet paper, <laughs> kind of important. That's it. Don't do, don't have your kid learn something that you do not need for survival of this thing. That's the truth of it. Plumbers, electricians, real practical things. Let them be the best they can in that field. They have a reason to be saved. Anyway, I think you'll learn something. And be constructive and try to make yourself better and learn stuff. That, that's going to be useful and try to do things, save your money up because it's going to cost money to build these caves. Uh, we need money to do the design work on the door system as well as right now we're doing the testing of the polymer, which is like a cement, but very hard. And we think we can get the hardness of it up to 36,000 PSI. That solves a lot of the door problems and that will save most people's lives. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it.